What's up guys? So, you can see what's behind me. Got the aviator in the shop. Pulled it in early this morning, kind of going through it. Obviously, you guys know we're gonna diagnose it real quick first, kind of see what it's all about. I wanted to go through the whole thing, kind of see what I'm working with. Check the suspension, check the rust underneath, exhaust, things like that. It's got, it does have a leak, it needs front struts, but we'll show you what I, guys, what I found on it. Take you through the process, check it out. Shut up and sit down. All right, guys, so here it is. Got it in this morning, kind of went through underneath, seeing what we're working with here. But this is kind of where I left off. I just been working on this thing kind of periodically throughout the day on my downtime. But it's the end of the day now. To show you guys what I found. Um, I actually got, this was the bank with no compression. It was the passenger side, bank one. Um, you can see I got the cam pulled out because I was kind of going through checking everything, um, you know, seeing what I'm working with. Obviously, you know, the timing failed. It did fail. We were right on that. And uh, pulling it apart, this is what I found. The, uh, the cam chain snapped, the intake one. Actually a pretty common uh, fault on this. I've seen this before happen on these things. Um, but yeah, we got a bad chain here. You can see it's just, uh, you know, it's broke apart. The chain's only as strong as its weakest link. So, nonetheless, obviously, I'm down to, uh, do I want to retime this? Or, you know, are we still going to pull the body off and uh, get a motor after pricing a few motors out? You know, these things, even used ones, run a good amount for low mileage. Um, and this thing needing, you know, front struts. I couldn't get the uh, the rear DVD to work, so I uh, you know I got some money to put in this thing. It looks like the inner part of the rotor's got some rust on it, you know. And obviously, if I'm going to do these things, I'm going to you know do everything. I just don't want to go over budget here, so I'm actually contemplating maybe doing the timing on it. it. Pretty much takes just as long as pulling the body off this thing. I think the timing on this calls for like 13 and a half hours, but. Wanted to go through the process, so thinking into that, you know, if I'm going to time this, you know, got to find out, make sure the valves are good, find out, make sure the cams are good, you know, kind of see where we're at from there. You know, obviously with that chain snapping, you know, there is a chance it's going to hit some valves, kiss some valves. So, you know, obviously I got the camera out, I was poking down in there, didn't really see anything on any of the pistons, but maybe uh, show you guys real quick shoot this over to a tools in action and uh, show you guys how uh do a quick cylinder leak down test on this. I checked a couple of them. I checked uh, three and four, but figure uh, I'm gonna check one and two on film here. I got this thing pretty much timed for number one right now and uh, show you guys how. I had a few, few subscribers ask to uh, see this uh, cylinder leak down in action. So we get you guys set up. We'll show you how I set this thing up to do a cylinder leak down test on this. All right, guys. So we're getting ready to check number one, but I'll show you how I set this thing up. You know, obviously you got your, uh, your pressure and the percentage the cylinder's holding. So kind of show you how, what I do here. Pull all the spark plugs, set the cylinder you're gonna check to top dead center. You know, make sure both cams are up or make sure both valves are up. Obviously I got the intake cam out so I ain't got to worry about any of those valves. I got the, uh, I could clearly see with the valve cover off, you know, the exhaust cams are up. They should be sealed if they're not damaged. But get the adapter in there, screw it in. And then what we do with the tool is how I like to set it up. I've seen people use it different ways or set it up different ways. But the way I do it is basically every time I put this thing away, I turn the regulator all the way, you know, counterclockwise. And then you plug in your shop air. So we got the shop air plugged in, and then what we'll do is just regulate it up to get this needle to the set position, get that needle to zero. So you can see it start building pressure. Go all the way to zero. All right, 
So I got that set. We're at about 100 PSI. We got this one at zero. We got the uh, adapter in. Close off the regulator. And then let's see if I can get this prop so you guys can pick this up. There we go. Let's get you guys zoomed in. You can see the glare, a little bit of a glare, but you guys can see the needles. And then we'll take this end and plug it up to the cylinders. What I like to do though is, uh, you know, sometimes if the cylinder is sealed, the crank will start to move and I don't have a locking tool on it right now, so I'm just using a you know, an 18 wrench on the cam. So get my wrench on there, get this thing plugged in, and obviously what we're seeing, obviously, you know, doing this, you want the motor to be warmed up, so the rings are nice and warmed up, but obviously this is cold, so I'm not ex expecting, you know, anything crazy in the green, anything in the yellow or the, you know, obviously the green is great, but anything in the yellow would be fine because it's a cold motor right now. I, obviously I can't run it because it's bad timing. It doesn't, it won't run. So. You guys can see those needles, get these things plugged in. Let's see what we got. And honestly, which is really surprising, we're in the green there and it's holding. That's pretty good considering that it's a cold motor and I could actually hear it leaking down past the, the rings right now. But that shows me that obviously that's our third cylinder that's still good obviously we know the valves are sealing that valve didn't get damaged two and or four and three didn't get damaged so I got two to check is the last one um, I did actually hear something on three but you break out these and find out that the uh, the intake valve wasn't closed all the way so that's what made me pull the cam off I didn't want to spin it when it was you know bad timing but this is a great way to be able to tell, you know, if you plug that thing in and, you know, you're in the red somewhere and you hear air, you know, you can find out what your problem is. Whether you're hearing it in the crankcase, you could just put it in the, uh, you know, in the oil, pop the oil cap or something like that, and the PCV or something, and listen for air leaking inside the crankcase. Obviously, if you've got a bad intake valve, you could just listen through the uh, intake, you know, open the throttle body and listen through the intake. Or if you got a bad exhaust, you could obviously even go in the back here through the exhaust in the back. Or, you know, pull an pull a O2 sensor and you could hear it through that. But this one's another good one, which is surprising to me because these are interference motor. And for the chain to snap like that and only be spinning one cam on one side surprises me. So just kind of going through the process here but we'll get set up let's uh let's check number two get this one set up switch it over to number two here I know the uh, I might have to adjust it a little bit but obviously I ain't got to worry about the intake valves those should be all the way up and sealed it looks like the uh, the exhaust valve should be up and sealed because I could see it Let's get it plugged in, see where we're at. Get my little wrench on the cam so it doesn't spin. Oh, it's starting to spin a little bit, I'm holding it. We're building pressure there. And that's at even decent too. I don't know if you guys are seeing that, but number two is good too. Whoa. And obviously guys, when you don't have a, uh, you know, a hold down tool on the crank, you know, always make sure, because this thing does move with pressure in there, always make sure, you know, you're at least holding a bolt or holding something, holding the crank so it doesn't spin. All right, guys. So what I'm going to do real quick on number one is check the top of the valves, check the bottom of the piston for damage just to make sure. So I got the camera out. And you guys obviously seen this thing. Great camera, great wireless camera, BK8500. It's got the, uh, you know, the dual cameras on it, one front facing camera, and then also a side one. You could toggle between the two on the screen. But 
I'm going to go ahead and actually put the side camera on because I want to get a look at these valves. It's got a light adjusting, it's got a zoom, all that good features. This also does UV, but let's see if we can get a shot of these uh, valves real quick. Get you guys seeing what I'm seeing. You can see that's the uh, intake valve there. Let me turn up this light a bit. And you can see she's sealed. I don't see any damage on the top of the piston. Give this thing a couple turns. There's the other one. Looks like the exhaust valve there. Let's see, we should be two exhaust valves. Here's the other one. Definitely looks like it's sealed. We're really close here. And swing around to this next one. That's the intake valve. I don't see any cracks in the head or anything like that. That's the top bottom portion of the head. Looking good. Check one more. Here we go, number four. This cylinder's all the way down so we can get a real good view at it. And we got the exhaust valves open on four because the cam's obviously pushing down on it. A little bit of carbon build up. Both open evenly. I don't see any marks on them. No marks on the valve. Intake looks like it's closed. Try to pull in a little closer here. This camera's got a zoom function too. Let's see. There we go. Could zoom in on it. Definitely looking good though. Cylinder walls look good. I don't know. So this is where I'm at with it guys. Got the, uh, actually found the issue pretty quick. Like I said, I, I knew it was bad timing, but you know, first thing I did this morning was obviously pull that valve cover off knowing that I had no compression on the passenger bank. Um, I mean, I gotta decide, you know, put in a motor in this thing, you know, be great content on the channel. You know, it's, uh, Kind of pricey. Jasper motors are pretty pricey, or Reman motor are, are really pricey. Um, you know, this thing in the area, in, in you know good condition, goes between you know thirty five hundred dollars to maybe fifty five hundred dollars. You know, and, and paying for a four thousand dollar Reman or you know a fifteen hundred dollar or two thousand dollar used motor, not knowing any problems, can't really find low low mileage on it. I think like a hundred or ninety was the lowest mileage motor I could find. And then obviously the labor of pulling the cat, pulling the body off, spark plugs, all the fluids, gaskets, things like that. Maybe uh, you know we're better off just retiming this thing and hoping for the best because you know if the motor's bad, we're back to square one. Hey, what's a couple hundred hours in the timing kit? Then putting a used motor in it and deal with that or pulling the cab off when we don't have to. This motor's perfectly good if you just do timing on it. We can see the changes broke on it. So I'm gonna check the other side, make sure uh, you know all the valves look good on the driver's side, do the cylinder leak down test on all those cylinders over there, make sure we're good, and uh, maybe decide from there. But it's probably looking like a timing, probably gonna do a timing job on this thing and just hope for the best. That way I could focus more of my money into you know replacing the front struts the brakes, find out what's going on with the rear DVD, got to have that working because, uh, like I said, my wife may want this thing. I don't know. She, uh, she really likes it, and I can't see it going to the junkyard. So let me know what you guys think. Probably looking like a timing on this thing instead of uh, you know, a body off frame, but hey, like I said, plan for the worst, hope for the best. So like, comment, subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one. Signing out.